Okay, quick check. 5.4.6.A. And it says identify if a reaction takes place with the following compounds. If no reaction takes place, write no. So we're going to write this whole thing out. This is going to take a little bit of time, but it's worth knowing how to do. So it says ammonium hydroxide. is reacted with aluminum nitrate. And we're trying to figure out if it forms anything. Okay, so ammonium, uh, if it did form something, in fact, let's go ahead and draw out the reaction like it would form something. We'll figure out whether um, the things are gonna be soluble or insoluble and determine if a reaction occurred from there. So here we have ammonium and aluminum and what's going to happen is the hydroxide and nitrate are going to switch so we'll get ammonium nitrate plus aluminum hydroxide all right let's go ahead and draw this out ammonium is nh4 it's got a positive one charge. Hydroxide has a negative one charge, so ammonium hydroxide is that. We're reacting it with aluminum nitrate. Aluminum's got a three plus charge. Nitri nitrate has a negative one charge, so we have to have three of them. And we're forming ammonium nitrate. Ammonium again is NH4 plus. Nitrate is NO3 negative plus aluminum uh, hydroxide, which will be ALOH3. So if you weren't able to do that, you're not ready, you need to go back to chapter four and make sure you understand nomenclature because this is going to be part of what you need to know. Once we have the reaction written, um, we can go through and, and balance it. If you want, I see right here, kind of looking for a point of difference, I've got three nitrates, so I'm going to want a three there that changes the number of ammonium, so I'm going to put a three there. That changes the number of oc of hydroxides. Let's get a three, 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 one, one. I'm looking good, so this thing is balanced. Um, that doesn't affect the solubility at all, or even part of the question. So, to bring you back and remind you of, of the question, the question is: Does a reaction take place? Well, how we know if a reaction took place is if not every single one of these is aqueous. Because if every single one of these is aqueous, that means they're all broken apart in solution on one side of the reaction, and then on the other side, they're still all broken apart in solution. So in other words, nothing actually occurred. But um, if one of them's solid, that means we actually formed something. So let's use our handy dandy uh, solubility chart. Again, I want you to memorize this. We should be looking through this and you just immediately know the answer. Um, here we have ammonium. Ammonium is always soluble. No exceptions. This is aqueous. Then we have aluminum nitrate. Nitrate is also always, always soluble. No exceptions. You should just memorize it. We have ammonium nitrate. We got all sorts of solubility going on over there. They're both always soluble. And then we have aluminum hydroxide. Hydroxide is right here. It's mostly insoluble. It has some exceptions over here. Aluminum is not one of those exceptions. Therefore, it's going to be insoluble. It's going to be a solid. So did a reaction take place? Yes. What happened is, let's go ahead and break it down. So we had this ammonium. We have this hydroxide. We have aluminum. We got these nitrates, three of them. I guess we can write them all out, make sure we've got them all balanced. And what happened is you threw all this stuff in solution and this aluminum found those three hydroxides and they fell in love, boom, they came together and formed a solid and that solid would have fallen out of solution. And over here we got three NH4 plus, plus three nitrates. These would be called the spectator ions. They remained aqueous on both sides of the reaction. Over here, they were aqueous. Over here, they were aqueous. They didn't do anything. Plus this aluminum hydroxide that came together 
which we would not break apart because it was formed. So a reaction did occur, yes. The next question is what is the precipitate? The precipitate was aluminum hydroxide. The spectator ions were, again, were the things that didn't do anything. We had ammonium and nitrate. All right, let's move on to the next question. It says a solution of potassium sulfate. Potassium sulfate would be, well, let's let's write it out. Potassium sulfate. I always start too far to the right. I don't know why I do that, but I do. Potassium sulfate is mixed with lead to acetate. Lead to acetate. And that would form, the acetate and the sulfate would switch. We would form potassium acetate. And lead to sulfate. All right, let's go ahead and write it out just for the practice of it. Potassium sulfate would be K2SO4. Potassium's got a one plus charge. Sulfate's two negative. Plus lead to acetate. That would be PPC2H3O2 2. And it would form potassium acetate, which would be KC2H3O2 plus lead to sulfate, PBSO4. All right, again, if you couldn't do that, go back to chapter four. You need to know nomenclature to pass the class. All right, it says. Um, is there a reaction? So we'll go through kind of like we just did in the last problem and see what each one is. So in this first one, I get um, K2, or K, excuse me, which is potassium right here. It says there's no exceptions. It's always soluble. So this is aqueous. Here we have lead to acetate. Acetate is one of those great ones where it's also always going to be soluble. It's aqueous. We know when we put potassium and acetate together, it's definitely aqueous. And then I get over here to the lead sulfate. Sulfate's right here. It's normally soluble. It's in the soluble, this whole area right here is stuff that's mostly soluble, but it has an insoluble exception, which happens to be lead too. This one would be a solid. And I'm sorry, I didn't balance this reaction. I guess I could real quick. There you go. Um, and so now we can go ahead and, and see what happened. It said, what is the precipitate? So first of all, did a reaction occur? Yes, a reaction occurred because we formed a solid. So the first question, reaction? Yes, a reaction occurred. The next question is, is there a precipitate or what is the precipitate? The precipitate here would be the non-aqueous thing right there, uh, which is lead to sulfate. The next question is for the spec ions. Those are the things that remained aqueous on both sides. What I like to do is underline this and get it kind of get it out of the way and then ask what's left on the product side that's aqueous. That was also aqueous over here. Um, that's potassium and acetate because again, potassium was aqueous, acetate was aqueous. It's aqueous over here again. So potassium and acetate were both the spec ions. And Okay, moving on to the last question. I can tell it's short, so my I, su I suspect the answer is no, that it's not a reaction. But let's look at it. It says a solution of calcium bromide is mixed with lithium sulfide. Calcium bromide plus lithium sulfide. The sulfide and the bromide would mix, would form calcium sulfide and lithium bromide.
And the question is, uh, did this reaction occur? Well, like normal, I like to write everything out so we get used to it. Calcium bromide is that. Lithium sulfide is Li2S. Don't get it confused with sulfate. And this would react to form calcium sulfide, which would be Cas plus liver lithium bromide. Um, you can go through and balance it by putting a two right there. It looks pretty balanced to me. And, and now we can go through and determine the states of each of these to see if a reaction occurred. So calcium bromide, bromides are here. It's mostly soluble, unless it contains silver, lead, or mercury one. It's not one of those. So this therefore is soluble, it's aqueous. Lithium is one of those that has no exceptions. It's always gonna be soluble, so that's aqueous. Calcium sulfide. Sulfide is usually insoluble, but it's soluble if it contains calcium, and therefore this is aqueous. Then we get to lithium bromide. We got lithium. We already know that that's always soluble, no exceptions. Aqueous, 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 aqueous. Nothing came together to form. What that means is on this side of the reaction, you had calcium ions, bromide, hanging out, you had lithium, and you had sulfide. And then on this side of the reaction, you had calcium ions, you had sulfide, Anything that's aqueous is broken apart. You had two lithiums and you had bromide. In other words, on this side of reaction, it looks exactly the same as this side of reaction. Nothing came together, nothing was formed, nothing happened, and therefore, is there a reaction? The answer is 